Now, we have just completed the first step. We have divided by the given factor. So where can we go from here? Well, I'm going to use this piece of information. Let's uh, get some space over here. Now, we're going to go from here to a complete factorization. So I want you to remember, um, this part probably is worth writing now, but maybe off on the side. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's a zero, remainder zero. I think it's helpful because you will often have remainders and it's important to identify you do have a remainder, it's zero. Okay. Um, can you guys help me out? Let's just do a simple numerical one. Can you help me divide this? Yes. What's, what's my first thing I'm going to write down? Can't go into one. Can't go into one. So then the next thing? One. It goes once into that, and I get seven. seven, and then I get three, carry down the zero. How many times? Four times. Uh, four times that is that, and that's why I get a remainder of two. Okay, now the reason why I went going through that is because we can make a statement out of this. This is about division, but I can make a statement about multiplication that's going to be very useful for my polynomial over here. Okay, the statement about multiplication, maybe you remember it is, 100, you can write it as how many lots of 7? 14 of them, right? 14 lots of 7, and then there's also a remainder hanging around. Right? Remember that? Now I can make a similar statement over here with this polynomial arranging the divisor, dividend, quotient, and remainder. Okay? Here's the way we're going to write it down. This color. We start by saying the dividend. That's the 100, the thing that was being divided out. Right? It was x cubed minus 7x minus 6. Remember that? Right? That was y. I can now break that into, see this part here? I can break it into the two factors that I've just found, right? Those two factors were x plus 1 and x plus 6, 7. Have a look, have a look. This is the quotient, right? x squared minus x minus 6. x squared minus x minus 6. And then, just like here, I add the remainder on, if there is one. What is the remainder in this case? It's plus 0, so I'm just going to not write that down. It doesn't change things. Okay, now this is good because what you've got over here is a quadratic and you guys are very good at factorizing these without any long algorithms. Can someone tell me the pair of numbers I'm after? Minus, minus, three. minus 3 and plus 2, right? So I'm just going to straight away go x minus 3, x plus 2. Are you happy with that? Yes. Thumbs up. So this was a long step, right? That first step is hard, but then when you get a quadratic you're like, cool, I can almost go on autopilot here, you've just completed the factorization. So now we're ready to complete this. Would you please, underneath this, draw a set of axes for me? Okay. Now, what was the point of factorizing? Why is factorizing helpful for if I'm trying to graph? What information is easy to read off the factorized form? The roots are what I, are easy for me to see, right? Do you want to go ahead and tell me, Shanaf, what the what do you think the roots are? One. Negative one. Negative one? Plus three. Plus three? And negative two. So these are the three roots that I read off of the factor. So I'm going to take those three roots and I'm just going to uh, plot them onto my Cartesian plane here. So Let's chuck a negative 1, a negative 2, and a 1, 2, 3. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Are you kind of happy with that? Does that look alright? So I know I'm going to pass through these. Now you don't need to draw this, but I'm going to have either one of these or one of these. Either one of those shapes could pass through all three of those points. How do I know which one it is? Is it going to sort of go downward or is it going to go upward? What do you see, Sean? I was going to say it go upwards because uh, when you times all the x's, you get a positive. Okay, so we can think about this two ways, right? Number one, as Sean was saying, if I multiply these three things together, they're all positive, right? So you're going to get something really positive as you go further and further to the right, okay? And that works totally fine with me. Um, another way you can think about it is just to put a number in, right? A number like 100. Uh, if you put 100 in here, that's going to be like, what's 100 times 100 times 100? That's like a million, right? A million? Taking away some other small stuff. So this is a really big positive number. You following with me? So I know I'm going to be this guy, not the other one. Okay, so I'm heading up in the right hand side. Now I need to join them together. So I'm going to do this. I think my shape is going to look roughly like that. What do you reckon? 
You okay with that? Do you have a question? Ah, uh -huh. now, one of the things you'll notice is I deliberately did not place the y-intercept until I had done this. It is exactly at negative 6, and I'm going to therefore label this as negative 6. I'm going to tell you why, why I did it. I'm going to tell you now why I didn't put that on earlier. Okay? Do you have a question, Sarah? How did I get which shape? Do you mean when I was having a look at these guys? Like, how did I come up with these? So I'm thinking of... Oh. How did, you know How did I go from, th from this into that? My question to you would be, where else could it possibly go in order to make sure I fit through these three points, right? So ju just try and start to draw something, right, that fits this basic overall shape and see if you could fit it. Um, if you wanted to, if you wanted to put a few extra steps in, you could use some of the techniques we've developed over the last little while. For instance, um, do you remember when we used to look at regions, like when we'd say the sine, the plus or minus, that kind of thing? What I could do is, I could graph one, two, three factors. Let me show you what it looks like, okay? It does take longer, but it gives you a little more certainty of what the shape is, okay? X plus one, uh, that's going to look roughly like this. X plus two, like this, and X minus three is going to be down lower, okay? These three green lines, they each represent one of these three factors, okay? And then I'm going to multiply them together. Do you remember when you were doing multiplication of functions together? We'd give you, you know, a graph. We didn't even tell you what the equations were. And we said, hey, multiply these together, right? Um, when you have a look at... Let me make this a bit longer. Here we go. When you have a look at the leftmost part of this graph, this part over here, You've got one, two, three things that are all negative. When you multiply three negative things, what will the sign of the answer be? Negative. It'll be negative, right? Negative times negative times negative. Two of them will cancel, leaving you with one negative, right? So I'm negative down here. What about when you hop over one step to the left? How about between here and here? You've got negative, negative, positive. What happens when you multiply them together? Positive. Do you see this is just going to go up, and then down, and then up, and then down, because here you've got negative, positive, positive. Together that gives you negative. And last one for completeness. Okay, three positives. I already knew the first thing that we worked out from the factorization was, I knew where these intercepts were. And now I just need to go through those orange areas and those blue dots and find a curve that fits all of them. And this is the one that does that. Does that make sense? You'll start to get to be a bit more intuition for it once you do a few more of these, as you'll see, because all cubics share a lot of characteristics in, in common. Now, just to come back to this idea of negative 6, right? The reason I didn't put it on earlier was if I had like measured out a place and I went like, oh, I think this is negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and placed it somewhere, right? Ironically, it's actually much harder to do an accurate graph when you've got like a specific spot you have to hit. Did you notice how quickly I just sort of went, wee, and I did a graph? And it didn't have to be super precise in a variety of ways. For example, I don't know where these two points are, but that's because we're not going to get to that until later on in the year when I've got calculus as a different topic under my belt. So you don't need to know where they are at this point. This overall shape, the curvature, the intercepts, that's all we need. So I'm actually going to put on afterwards. By the way, how do we know it was negative 6? How did you look at it and just see it? Where's negative 6 on the board? Can you see? So. It's at the end of the um, polynomial, isn't it? Um, you can see that if I put in x equals 0, that's how I usually find a y-intercept, right? What happens to the x cubed term? If x equals 0, it just becomes 0. What about this guy? It's just 0. So you just get left with the constant term. There's your graph. Are you happy with that? Can I ask you guys to have a look at number 2? I'm not going to hold your hand for this division, but once you get to that division, um, there's something different about Question two versus question one, it's why I gave it to you, I'm not just giving you more of the same. But I would like you to practice going through that division without my help. I reckon you guys can have a go. Or if you um, struggle a little bit, call us over and we'll individually give you a hand. Okay?